بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we thank him upon all conditions, we send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household, all his companions, we ask Allah to bless them all and to bless every single one of us. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, I'm sure we are aware of a surah in the Quran known as Ar-Rahman, named after the most merciful. This surah is unique, even for those who don't know the Arabic language, in that it has in it verses that are repeated more than 30 times exactly the same Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says which is it of the favors of your Lord do you deny O mankind and jinn kind this verse is actually referring to both mankind and jinn kind asking them a question this question would require us in order to answer it to look at the gifts of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us because indeed we cannot deny any of the favors of allah and they are so many that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says if you were to try and count the gifts of Allah, the ni'am or the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you, you would never be able to count all of them. You would just count a few and that is actually a small dot uh, compared to the entire amount of gifts that Allah has bestowed upon us. So what is it or what is meant by this particular question that what is it or which is it of the favors of your Lord do you deny? It's simple for us to say we don't deny any of the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when Allah speaks about denial of the gifts, a question we should ask ourselves from amongst us, are we in denial of the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Am I a person who denies the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So to answer the question, we need to look at how we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has created us and with us, he has created so many other creatures in order for us to have a beautiful life while we are here being tested by him. This is something we need to understand. My life on earth and yours is not in order to enjoy in such a way that we will never see hardship, but to enjoy within the limits in a way that whenever we see hardship, we endure. We are from amongst those who know how to react to hardship how to relate it to Allah, how to answer the questions posed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that we pass the test, not in a way that we fail the test. So for a person to say by mouth that I appreciate the gifts of Allah, it's not enough. Does he worship Allah alone? That's the first question he needs to ask himself. If he engages in polytheism, he has failed. He has not appreciated the gift of Allah. So the answer would be, this person is denying the gift of Allah. Allah created and He created absolutely everything for us to be able to say, I acknowledge you as a creator and I acknowledge your greatness. The first point of stopping is to ensure that you worship Allah alone and none other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Believing that He is the controller. If He can give and provide for the plants, the vegetation, and absolutely all the other creatures of Allah, the ants and the lizards and the snakes, and even, may Allah honor us all, the pig. Allah provides for that pig as bad as it may be in terms of cleanliness and in terms of it being considered najis, which means completely and totally impure. That too has been created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He provides for that creature and he has kept it as a test for us all. If Allah wanted, there would have been nothing haram on earth. Everything would be permissible, okay allowed to do but he wanted to test us to say i'm going to create things that will be permissible for you and i will create other things that will be prohibited upon you so that you may abstain from the latter and you may partake of that which is the former so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
has created and He provides. And in order for us to acknowledge that we understand the greatness of Allah and we definitely appreciate the favors of Allah, we need to worship Allah alone. Secondly, we need to understand as we are answering the question, that part of the denying of the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be to deny the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and or to deny any of the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jesus may peace be upon him, Abraham may peace be upon him, Moses may peace be upon him. Those are obviously the English terms in the Arabic language. We refer to them as Isa alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam and so on. So to deny that these are the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be denial of the favors of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his wisdom, divine wisdom, he has sent to us reminders. He did not need to, but he chose to. It would have been okay if he chose not to, because that is Allah, it's up to him. He chose to so that we do not have an excuse to say no one reminded us. No one told us to worship you alone. He says, I sent to you messengers. All of those messengers, their message was worship Allah alone and we will teach you how Allah wants to be worshipped. Therefore, do not participate in acts of worship that were not taught by the messengers. This is part of the, the acceptance of the gift of Allah. When Allah sent for us the biggest gift, Obviously, the greatest gift we all have, may Allah consolidate it for us, strengthen it for us, and grant us growth in it, is actually Iman. Iman means to believe, to be able to believe in one God alone, the Creator, Him alone. That is the biggest favor upon us. And the prophethood of Muhammad وسلم, being the last of all messengers, the best of all creation. So this is the biggest favor we have, the statement we utter and believe in. However, let's realize that if we are to acknowledge that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad may peace be upon him, was sent to us as a messenger and a final messenger, part of that acknowledgement would mean he came to teach us something, something that he knew no one else knew. Something he was given by Allah, no one else knew besides him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Revelation given to him through the angel Jibreel. So as Jibreel alayhi salam was told it, he was actually aware of it. But some of it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. In order for us to acknowledge this status of prophethood, we need to know that he came to teach us something very important. What was it? It was... How Allah wants to be worshipped. That's what it was. How does Allah want you to tread your time on this earth? How does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want you to tread the earth during your short stint in this particular place? So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa came and he taught us. He provided a clear record of what is permissible, what is prohibited, what Allah wants you to do, the obligations and what he does not want you to do. And he taught us, I have been sent by Allah to you to warn you. Inni nadhirul lakum bayna yaday adabin shadeed. I have come to you as a warner. There is a punishment that is coming in front of you if you are not going to adhere to what I have to say. He made it clear. Those who scoffed and laughed at him, they were served the punishment. Those who obeyed his instruction, they got closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is from the time, from the beginning, the time of Quraysh, or should I say the time uh, of the early Islamic period when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was instructed to give the message, to deliver the message. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam came to teach us how to worship Allah. And this is why one of the biggest ways of acknowledging the favors of Allah upon us is to make sure we adhere to what Muhammad sallallahu taught us in terms of acts of worship. It's an insult for Allah to have created us, sent for us a messenger and not telling him what he wants from us through the messenger. How can Allah call Muhammad sallallahu a messenger without a message? There is definitely a message. So Allah would never do that. But if he sent the messenger with the message, where are we whom the message is delivered to from following the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu following his path. This is why my brothers and sisters, if you really want to thank Allah, one of the biggest ways of thanking Allah is to ensure that your acts of worship are only those that Muhammad sallallahu participated in or taught or instructed or he allowed. This is what it is. 
if we are engaging in something that we have brought about by our own whims and fancies or sometimes what we have just watched our forefathers doing and we think that you know what we've watched our forefathers doing this for years and end on end let us also participate in it let us also do it wallahi we are insulting allah we are insulting his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam we are not thankful of the favors of allah upon us because of what i've just mentioned earlier this is why my brothers and sisters spend your entire lifetime purifying your acts of worship ensuring that firstly they are for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and secondly no matter what the whole world says and what they proclaim if an act of worship is not taught or instructed by muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam not only do we not need it but it would be considered an innovation to participate in it and himself he says kullu bid'atin dalala every act of innovation in worship when we use the term bid'ah we are referring to something new in acts of worship that which was not brought by Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says that is dalal dalal meaning it is a stray de it is very far astray away from the right path you want to know what's the right path it is a path that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam engaged in if he didn't it is the wrong path when it comes to acts of worship so from now on anything you do in your life in terms of acts of worship ask yourself one question did my messenger the one whose intercession i would like on the day of judgment the one whom i'm so honored to be a follower of actually teach this or condone it or participate in it if the answer is no you do not need it not at all it is something that is an insult people start saying things doing things that are far away from what Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught they consider them good and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about such people in the Quran and this is at the end of surah al-kahf where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa hum yahsabuna annahum yuhsinuna sun'a alladhina dalla sa'yuhum fi al-hayati ad-dunya wa hum yahsabuna annahum yuhsinuna sun'a he speaks of a category of people and he says those who participate in so many deeds thinking that they are doing good but their deeds are astray dalla sa'yuhum the same word is used dalal this is why muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says man amila amalan laysa alayhi amruna fa huwa raddun this hadith should bring about a shiver down our spines whoever does an act of worship that we have not instructed that act of worship shall be thrown back at them in sin subhanallah clear loud simple why is it that we struggle coming to terms with this it is very strong it is such a powerful message do not insult muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam by claiming that you know an act of worship that he did not do that will bring you closer to allah astaghfirullah we believe he was complete the deen the religion is complete he recited the verses to us at the end al yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al islam deena Allah says very clearly and Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam read the verse for us this day i have perfected your religion it is complete it is over it is sealed no extras shall be added into it in terms of acts of worship i've taught you he actually went to the companions and asked them a question have i delivered the message they said yes he looked up in the skies and said allahumma fashhad oh allah bear witness oh allah bear witness i these people are confirming that i've delivered the message subhanallah where are we why is it we don't understand he says this day allah says this day i have perfected your religion and i have completed my gift notice the same word being used ni'mati my gift upon you is over it is completed this is a gift connected to your acts of worship as for the rest of it you will still continue earning you will still continue living all according to what i have shown you i have laid the rules and regulation of trade of worship of everything else eating consuming living marriage divorce you name it it is there subhanallah this is the gift of allah upon us he says i have completed my gift upon you is now full it is there and i am i am pleased for you to adopt the submission as a faith as a religion submission to what the term islam is used islam means to submit submit to what to allah and his messenger that's it may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us may he bestow upon us 
The mind that understands the favors of Allah. What is the point of reading so many times? Which is it of the favors of your Lord do you deny? And then we just nod our heads. We say we don't deny anything, but we participate in acts where there is shirk or association of partnership of Allah. We participate in acts of worship that were foreign to the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. They never ever knew about it. They didn't teach it. They didn't participate in it. We're calling it an act of qurba. Qurba meaning worship that will bring you close to Allah. But Muhammad sallallahu did not do it. How could it bring you closer to Allah when he was the closest to Allah? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Simple question. Ask yourself, did he do it? Believe me, if he did not do it, do not do it. That is considered the true love of this beautiful messenger, the most honored, the most beautiful of all creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The greatest, the most noble, the one who was sent to be followed, not for us to disgrace him by engaging in acts that he did not participate in. And then claiming through our statements by tongue that it's enough for me to say, I love you, O messenger. And that's it. That's the statement. Proof of love is not simply in a statement. Anyone can say, I love you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us understand the true meaning of the term love. So this is why if we take a close look at these verses, Allah says, which is it of the favors of your Lord do you deny? Look at the gestation period of a woman. Look at how man is born. Look at where were you just one, one year before you were born. Where were you? That's the truth. Where were you? Ask yourself the question. You will understand the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you when you realize the answer to that question. Then take a look at your clothing. How did Allah cause the cotton to grow or the wool to be shaved off the sheep or whatever else it is? The leather, so many other things, the watches you have, the phones you have. Take a look at where it came from. It was dug somewhere across the globe in a mine it then processed from one stage to another until it was bought by a company that molded it into something and then later on they refined that molding and it came to you in the form of a mobile phone you just look at it and you say i've got enough money i bought this latest s7 subhanallah here it is s7 not only dual sum but triple sum here it is and on top of that we haven't yet read salatul fajr what's the point of that we haven't even part of, we haven't thought of improving our dress code. We haven't thought of it, but we're enjoying. So where your money came from, you don't realize it's a system Allah has put in place. If Allah wanted, none of us would need each other. But he subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this is something amazing. Do not forget to be virtuous to one another. Do not forget the virtue of one another. So I need to respect you, you respect me and so on. One of the reasons is we are created in an interdependent fashion. Although we depend on Allah to fulfill our needs, He has used some of His creation in order to serve the other. And this is why subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us in such a beautiful way. He has made it such that if I work, I will then earn. And when I worked, what did I do? I served humanity or I served one of the creatures of Allah within the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I did so much, someone will benefit from it. That man who employed me will probably sell a product that I was part and parcel of assisting towards its manufacture or production. And the line continues. If Allah wanted, we would not be dependent on anyone. I would do my own thing, you would do your own thing. But part of the test is to respect one another, to be able to do business with one another, to understand what is halal and haram, to understand the favors of Allah upon you. I need you, my brother, you're a plumber. I've got a problem back at home, for example. And then this is how, if I don't have the expertise, I benefit from you, I pay you, the money comes into your hands. This is the system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the system of Allah. And for him to have created us in an interdependent way, it shows that part of worshipping Allah is to fulfill the rights of the rest of humanity. If you do not fulfill the rights of the rest of humanity or the rest of the creatures of Allah, you have denied the favors of Allah upon you. They are denied because Allah created not only you alone, one person on your own. He created entire creation with you. What do you share in common with the tree or the plant that is outside? Do you know what you share in common? The creator is the same. Subhanallah. Who created that? Created me. Amazing. 
So you have rights and the, and the tree has rights. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. Let's not be fooled by thinking that it's enough for me to say, I thank Allah, I praise you, O Allah. Subhanallah, we sit and read it a hundred times, two hundred, five hundred times, and we say we praised Allah. We feel like saints walking out of the house of Allah, but our hearts are dirty, filthy, and we do not fulfill the rights of others. We have absolutely no clue of the gift of Allah upon us. We think that it's enough for me to just mention by tongue the praise of Allah. That's not enough. The, a person can praise Allah as much as they want. If they are associating partners with Allah, they've wasted their time. It's a reality. Allah says, Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bih wa yaghfiru ma duna thalika liman yasha. Allah will not forgive if a person dies in the condition of association of partnership with Allah. Allah says he does not forgive shirk. He will forgive all other sins, whatever he wishes. So this is not connected to the issue of tawbah and repentance. Because if a person seeks forgiveness, he will be forgiven from every sin, including shirk. But if a person dies in a condition that they have not yet sought forgiveness, then Allah is saying the other sins, we may forgive them. We may forgive everything, even though they haven't asked for forgiveness. We might do that. It's up to us. If we will, but one sin we will not forgive. If a person dies in that condition without seeking our forgiveness, is shirk, association of partnership. What is the reason? People ask Allah is so merciful. Why is he saying this? He is saying it because the entire purpose of creation is to worship Allah alone. That's what he said in the Quran. I have not created mankind or jinn kind except that they worship me, Ya'buduni, me alone. They worship me alone. So if they faulted regarding the purpose of creation, we will not forgive them. But if they faulted regarding everything else and anything else, we, we may choose to forgive them and still give them paradise, even though they may not have deserved it. Subhanallah, it's the mercy of Allah. So people want to know why doesn't Allah forgive shirk if you die in that condition. Number one, we must say, if you have asked Allah's forgiveness prior to death, Allah will forgive you even from shirk. And number two is if you die in that condition, the reason is you have failed the core of the test. The simple, straightforward, initial, primary, simple question, you have responded wrongly. One plus one equals two. The minute you say three, you can never ever have a mathematics certificate. No matter how simple the rest of or difficult the rest of the questions were, the first primary question of mathematics is one plus one. That's what it is. If you cannot get the answer as two, how can you progress to multiplication, division, and, and everything else? You need the simple answer. So Allah says, this is the first test. May Allah help us really, my brothers and sisters, to be truly grateful to be thankful, to appreciate his gifts upon us. He has bestowed upon us so much. Perhaps on another occasion, we may go through some of these gifts of Allah. It is so amazing, intriguing. It is absolutely awesome to look at the favors of Allah, the gifts of Allah upon us. Look at the creation around us and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all and may we be from amongst those who have learned a lesson and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with us and may he love us too. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.